Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for tuning in today. We experienced a little bit of a technical difficulties coming out of this, but it's all good. You know, good talent is flexible. We're going to keep rolling with the punches. I'm ex so excited. Um, to have Claire Perry here. She's a lead consultant of WeCoach. Um, again, I'm Marty Reed. I work with Positive Coaching Alliance, managing our national and corporate partnerships. Um, Claire has actually been working in sport for good, particularly in trauma-informed sports, um, for almost 10 years now. And she's also a basketball coach, a mom, former collegiate basketball player at Cornell University. So we're so excited to have Claire with us today. How are you, Claire? I'm great, Marty. How are you? Can you hear me okay? I can hear you great. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Awesome. Absolutely. Um, I would love to just start off. If you can give us a quick um, background on We Coach and sure. What is trauma-informed coaching? Yeah. Um, thanks for having us. Yeah. This is great. I love everything that PCA is doing. Obviously, we've been working together for like, I don't know, it seems like forever now. But thank you for having us. This is awesome um, and incredible resources for everyone who's involved with PCA. So thank you. Um, we Coach has been around for almost two years now. And we work with programs, teams, corporations like Nike on um, how to build out their sport for good programs. And if they don't have one, we'll help you build out that as well. Um, specifically, the two main things that we do is provide coach training specific on trauma informed coaching. Um, oftentimes you'll hear uh, trauma informed or trauma sensitive. Um, sometimes we'll say healing centered, um, brain aware. So there's a lot of different terms being thrown around and we can go through those. Uh, but trauma informed coaching, um, and designing programs to be trauma informed as well. So trauma informed, uh, what does that mean? So trauma informed coaching or trauma informed programming is in the least sciencey way, because I'm not actually a science person, I'm just like a huge nerd and <laughs> love learning. Um, and we could talk about the brain. Um, it's just like an empathetic way to coach. Um, and leveraging what we know about the power of sport, power of physical activity, and the power of relationships to help kids who have been dealing with a lot of stress in their lives, either as individuals or within their community and their families, um, and understanding what that stress does to kids and their behaviors. Um, it actually changes the brain. Um, so I think it's like, how do we just treat our kids as humans and see that they have stories and context and um, understanding that maybe what they're exhibiting in their behaviors is as a result of something completely unrelated to you. They're not trying to ruin your day. Um, so we do a lot of breaking down the brain um, and then we're just really like talking about how physical activity is awesome. It lights up the part of the brain that we want for learning and creative thinking and understanding what they're doing just versus just doing it to do it. Um, and coupling that with a caring adult because we know that caring adults are protective, are healing. Um, so what better place to help kids feel safe, feel like they're competent in something than with a coach who is then trauma informed and brain aware. Wow, that's so good. That? I love how you mentioned having a caring adult, someone that truly cares about kids. And as, as coaches, we wanna make sure kids understand that we do care about them. I think that's something that yeah. we have in common at Positive Coaching Alliance. We really wanna help coaches take advantage of their influential platform to really impact the lives of the athletes that they are coaching. Um, now, when yeah. an athlete or when a child is going through a lot of stress, What's actually going on in their head in that moment? And, and how does it manifest into certain behaviors? Like, is there anything that coaches or parents can recognize and say, oh, you must be going through a lot of stress? Totally. Um, so we're gonna, you're gonna have to follow along with me, but we're gonna do a brain map. Okay. All right. So we're gonna use our hand. Uh, and then this is our brain, everybody. Um, this is how we do it at We Coach. Uh, thank you to Megan Bartlett, our founder who has done just like an incredible job of taking all this brain science and translating it into the sport and coaching world. So the brain, this is our brain stem that goes like this, right? Um, this is where all of our uh, regulatory stuff happens. So like things that you shouldn't have to think about, breathing, swallowing, blinking, um, things that are happening when you're a baby, 
Like this, this is what's developing. The brain goes from the bottom up. All right. And then, so this is the brain stem. This is the emotional part of the brain. This is where all the stress lives, right? Like all the fight, flight, freeze, mm -hmm. um, all the feelings of like love. And if you think about it, this is where we are as an infant. And this is where we are like Leo, my son's age, he's seven all the way until like 18. If you think about what kids are doing at that point, are they like super emotional and mm -hmm. not really mm -hmm. thinking through part of their brain? They're living in this part of their brain, the limbic system. Um, and what lives there is the amygdala. It's like our little submarine sonar being like, where's our threat? Where's the fear? And yeah. it's constantly looking for that. And then as we get older and uh, what we really want to develop in our kids is this part of our brain and that's the frontal cortex. And that's what makes us human. That's what makes us unique. That's where all of our creative thinking happens, the thinking about the thinking. Um, that's where we want all of our kids to be. Unfortunately, what happens is when our stress response goes off, um, for anyone, we're not at our best selves, right? So like when we're super stressed and technology is not our friend, right? What, what happens to our bodies? Like what just happened? Like, yeah. are we super calm and everything or what's like physically happening to our bodies? Right. Heart goes up, we're sweating. Heart rate increases, <laughs> maybe our palms start to sweat a little bit. We start sweating. I'm like, it's not even hot yeah. here and I'm sweating. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right, and I've, I'd imagine you could then solve like cancer and COVID-19 right now, now that you're super stressed and your heart rate is up and you're, <laughs> and you're um, like at your best self, right? <laughs> Right. Really? No. Right. So instead Absolutely. we're, we have like that short fuse, right. Or we're actually, if you think about the brain, this part of the brain, the frontal cortex, where you need to like think through what's happening is actually shut down. So you aren't I able to do both at the same time. Yeah. yeah. So what happens is your brain is wired to protect your body. So that fight flight freeze is going off to be like fight off that saber tooth tiger. Right. You don't need to be thinking about the meaning of life right now. You need to be thinking about, do I need to fight this person? Do I need to protect my family? Do I need to hide? And so all of the power then just focuses on that, which is actually what you want in that moment. But unfortunately what's happening and what we're seeing with kids who are dealing with super stressful situations, again, just like as an individual, but then you tackle on uh, family stress and then you tackle on community stress, which is even more Pertinent now, when you think about COVID and how it's actually adversely affecting communities that are already under-resourced and under-supported, what happens is kids start living in this area. They start living in this emotional part of their brain. So when we see a kid uh, completely isolated and not wanting to hang out or participate, if we see a kid uh, fighting and like as he's uh, inadvertently pushed under the boards, right? And like, that's a physical game at basketball, but when we see this like response of swinging and we're like, what did you just do? Why did you just do that? That's actually just their protector part of their brain firing to protect them. Because when you are dealing with overwhelming stress that much and that often, the brain is plastic. And then that's what's going to take over. As much as we want them to be here and thinking about their actions, the, right. the emotional part of their brain has taken over to protect them. Um, yeah. so what we, what we see there is again, like the kids not participating, the kid who's constantly starting fights, uh, usually the kids that we don't want, which is the worst, right? Like that's as a coach, you're just like, oh, this kid. And you never want to think that once you are trauma informed, because actually you start learning about the brain and you start realizing that sport and adult caring relationships can actually get kids here, which we can talk about for days about Marty, if you want to. Yeah, and I mean, I like how you mentioned, you know, just the outside forces that can cause, you know, the stress and trauma. Because in the past, I've always thought of trauma in the sense of like intense things that are happening at home, right? You know, you could have alcoholic in the household, whatever it may be, verbal abuse, physical abuse, you know, there's so many things that could be happening at home. And then topping yeah. off that, the community stress, right? Yeah. And like you mentioned it right now, we are going through a public health crisis with the pandemic, COVID-19, yeah. you know? Um, yeah. Like, would you agree that this right now has been a traumatic experience for athletes? And how can we, how this, how can this potentially affect them when we go back to sports? Yeah. 
Uh, for for sure, there's actually a huge study that um, stud that kind of grouped all the ten top most common um, traumas that would happen in kids. It's called the Adverse Childhood Experience Study or the ACEs study. Um, so if you're looking to find out more about um, who has or what has and what does it mean when you have one to eight ACEs, um, right. check out the Adverse Childhood Experience Study. Um, it does not take into account community trauma. So when we, the study found that um, more often people are dealing with super stressful situations uh, than we thought. We thought it was just like a certain particular population, right. Um, right. not us. And actually, we are. Like every single one of us almost has been dealing with some sort of stressor, just like you said, bullying, verbal abuse, emotional abuse. Um, and that is a public health issue that the ACEs study found. More people are dealing with trauma than we thought. Yeah. What makes it more of a social justice issue, unfortunately, is that you'll find a higher prevalence of ACEs in communities that are already dealing again with under-resourced situations and under-supported situations. And again, talking about COVID, you'll see the same exact thing when you look down and you look at the zip codes and you look at the demographics of those who are impacted in the worst way are dying. It's the same population that are actually having to deal with already stressful individual and community stresses. They have a high number of ACEs. So when you think about that, uh, Dr. Perry, uh, we're gonna, we'll send out those links because he's incredible. He's from the Child Trauma Academy. He wrote this boy called The Boy Who Was Raised as a Dog. Sorry, he wrote this book that was um, The Boy Who Was Raised yeah. as a Dog. Everybody should read it. Um, yeah. Very good book. He said, it's incredible. He said that, yes, there are things that we need to worry about now and sport is, is definitely one of them. What we really need to also just keep in mind is those who are already on the fringe, what do we do once we do come back in whatever comeback is? And right. I think when it comes to sport and our programs, being brain aware and being aware of um, what is happening in our brain when we're at our best selves, we are ready to go and play. And I understand that coach and I'm gonna go and execute exactly as I said. That yeah. may not happen or it may be delayed. And we may have some situations where kids are not picking up as much as we want them to. So we need to focus on things that they can control because one definition of trauma is the wrenching away of trauma of control when you need it the most. So when we get back to our programs and when we're with our coaches, what are the things that we can control? And we could yeah. start that now, right? Like we could start doing and using technology and connecting with them as much as we want to physically be with them. There's yeah. going to be some things that we can do now to kind of bridge that gap, right, to the actual program. Um, when they show up, I think what we need to take is a, a, some time, you know, not expecting things to kind of just roll right as they to, Like snap back right away, yep, okay. Like not, yeah. and I think in addition to that, it's not just our athletes. I think there's some self-awareness that we need to have as coaches and as program managers and directors and league administrators that, how are we doing, right? Because I'm, I'm a basketball coach and I, I don't know what the future of basketball is right now, right? Like the ball is the most disgusting thing in the world if you really think about it and it's touching everybody's hands mm -hmm. and it's in an enclosed space. So a part of me is also like, maybe we should be having some change the game conversations, you know, like what is sport even gonna look like and what do, let's try and figure that out before we get our kids in there because they're already used to all this, like, what is happening? I'm not able to kind of process this. So yeah, I think yeah. even before the athletes, we got to think about what, what are we even going to provide? And I think what we can provide is connection and then mm -hmm. physical activity in a maybe a different way. Maybe basketball right. becomes three on three, one on one. We wear gloves, right? Like we got to start thinking through all that stuff uh, in addition to. Yeah, and you talked about, you know, how we can start preparing now as adults, as coaches, as parents. I mean, you have a little boy, Leo, love him to death. Talk to us, I mean, what you guys have been up to at home. How have you been able to keep him active? And, you know, how is he handling the sports hiatus? Marty, that's a great question. Um, I'd love to hear what everyone else has to say because I'm all in this. <laughs> how old is Leo again? Leo is seven. Seven, okay. Yeah, uh, one of my coworkers has a two-year-old. Yeah. yeah, and and I'm like, I don't know how you're doing it with a two-year-old. At least like with Leo, I can kind of provide some sort of structure, and I'm like, follow this, right? Um, with a two-year-old, 
I'm like, they don't know what's going on. And yet you're working at home and they're always there. So everything's great. Um, but with me and Leo, he's been great. Like for the most part, he's I've been surprised actually about how he's handled the transition. Um, one of the things that we've learned as like trauma informed coaches and, and talking about trauma informed is structure and consistency are really important. Um, again, that definition of like wrenching away of control when you need it the most. Um, so like on day one, even before we were in lockdown, I was like, we're going on lockdown um, because I just, I got nervous. I, my flight went off. Um, and I, we have a, we have a schedule and I'm not saying it's like at 10 Oh five, we're doing this exact thing, but it is very visual. It is a, it's on the wall and I'm like, it's 11 o'clock. What should we be doing right now? Um, and it doesn't work every single time, but there is some sort of like consistency and control that, um, helps him and helps me where I'm like, Ooh, it's lunchtime. Right. And it kind of puts us on a schedule and we have that consistency. Um, but like, it doesn't work all the time. And it's, it's been a, yesterday was fascinating. We, he had a homework and I thought it was easy as a older person. I thought he would be able to figure that out. And I was like, why aren't you getting this? And I lost it. Like, I was like, I don't understand why you're not understanding this. And in that moment, I didn't think about where I was in my brain because I wasn't thinking I wasn't here. I was actually just reacting and that just made him worse. Right. Like, I, and it was like my emotion matches his emotion. And you just think about any sort of escalation or argument that never works. Right. A dysregulated person can never regulate another dysregulated person. So um, after I somewhat calmed down and was like, what am I doing? I'm the adult in this situation. Um, we went outside. We have a very small outside area and we threw the baseball. And I was like, Marty would like this. We yeah. are doing softball, baseball. Um, and what's awesome about catch and passing um, and kicking the ball back and forth is that rhythm is super soothing. And it's soothing because you know what's next. But one piece of research, again, from Dr. Perry that is awesome is that it all stems from the heartbeat that you hear and feel and just like the touch of it all from your mother's heartbeat when you're in the womb. Like that is the first thing that you, like that tactile emotion that you are uh, feeling when you're not even alive yet outside in this world that has brought you comfort, all your needs are met. And that idea of that heartbeat and that rhythm is literally instilled in us from, from in the womb. So if we were, I should have thought about it earlier, right? I should have been like, this homework doesn't matter, right? At this point, it doesn't matter. We should just go out and play. We have that privilege of like having a very small out space. Let's play catch. And it worked. Like, of course, I was like, oh, of course it worked, you know? Like, and then afterwards he did his homework and he did it right and it was great. Um, so I think it's been like an, a roller coaster of emotions and uncertainty, but what's really worked is like thinking about the stuff that we think about as coaches, as trauma-informed coaches, that relationships matter, physical activity works. Um, and again, this idea of uh, rhythm, particularly for kids, and all humans that are dealing with super stressful situations, rhythm, patterned, repetitive, rhythmic movements are incredibly soothing. And it brings you out of that freaking out part of your brain, the emotional part of your brain, down to like, let's just focus on our breathing. Let's just focus on the most basic of survival's uh, yeah. instincts. And then you can kind of talk about the things that you want to talk about. Um, right. And right. so it's been fascinating, Marty, to like be home and be like, this is going to be great. Everything's going to work. We're going to be great. And sometimes it doesn't. Yeah. yeah, I know. And that's such great advice that pattern, rhythmic, you know, repetitive experience yeah. with kids and helping them get back to their basis, right? And calming them yeah. down and being able to be ready yeah. in a more, I guess, open mind to learn um, yeah. or in a state and to me. learn. I think that's important. Yeah. yeah. And, for and it's too. not just me, it's for us too, exactly. Like right. you've seen the coaches where they're just yelling and that doesn't help anything. So we need to do yeah. some self checking, self awareness of self where control. are we at, you know? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I think also being able to do something like that, take your kid outside and play catch with them, that is also an example of filling the emotional tank, one of our PCA principles that we talk about, right? Showing appreciation, spending time with our kids, letting them know that you care. And I think doing an activity like playing catch with them is something that would definitely fill the emotional tank. Um, yeah. And 
what are some other ways you think that, you know, filling the emotional tank can foster a healing environment? Yeah, for sure. I love every time we talk about filling the emotional tank. And I was thinking about um, when we presented together your mistake rituals and um, the elm tree and everything else and awesome resources that PCA provides. Um, in the beginning, we said trauma-informed coaching is, is understanding the brain and, and the impact of stress on the brain and behaviors and then coupling that with physical activity and relationships. And I think emotional, filling the emotional tank really helps build that connection mm -hmm. to have that caring adult mentor human um, in a kid's life because you're noticing what they're doing awesome. And when, just like think about us, like feels really good when someone yeah. says, you're awesome. You look great. Yeah, yeah mm -hmm. exactly. And actually what happens is instead of freaking out, instead of having that emotional part of the brain, we're then able to calm down. There's so much research that says like, even a baby sees the mother's face because they've shown up consistently to feed and to soothe, just that like recognition of the face calms down the stress response because they feel safe and they know that they are in a trusted environment and relationship. Um, so I, I love thinking about the emotional tank because it's easy. Celebrate your humans. Celebrate like the little things that they do. Give a high five, but also like be specific with the praise. Be like, I saw you grab and push back Really right. do a really good box out and grab that rebound. Yeah. That's called persistence, all right? Or that's called tenacity. And if you put right. a word to it and you're specific to it, then they're like, oh, that wasn't just luck, or, you know? Like I did that. And right. then as a job, as a coach's job, you'd be like, yeah, where else can you be persistent in life and have that same successful outcome? And that's when you get that like crossover with life skills. Yeah. I'm gonna be persistent in the classroom. I, it will pay off because I will then get good grades. Um, so I love uh, sorry, specific praise. And one of my favorite things that I've um, been doing for a little bit, and I, I steal everything, is um, praise the bench and teach, sorry, praise the field, teach the bench. Ooh. Praise the field, teach the praise bench. Praise the field, teach the yeah. bench. All yeah. right. When you're playing, you, uh -huh. you don't want to know that, I, that you bricked the shot. Yeah, right. I know. I just bricked the shot. Thank you for telling yeah. me. I, I, I feel great. Right. Yeah. Um, I, I've had that that person, that coach. Um, right. So instead, just be like, this is where like the mistake ritual I think comes in. It's like I see you. It's all good. Let's move on. And then they know that when they come out, like we'll talk about it. But I talk to my bitch nonstop. I'm like, what did you yeah. just see out there? What could have gone differently? How do y'all feel mm -hmm. about what's happening out there? Because they're there. That keeps yeah. them attentive, that keeps them connected, and they're in a position to actually respond because they're not the ones who just messed up. Then they're ready to go, you know? So I love that one where it's like, praise the field, teach the bitch. My girls are like, what's the okay. question? This is great advice. I mean, uh, I mean, it's so important that, I mean, these concepts may seem so simple or so easy, but we do have to take a proactive approach when it comes to this. We have to be intentional about the specific praise, you know, yeah. and these tools that we're providing and talking to coaches about so they remember how to do this in those moments, right? And parents as well. What are some yeah. other specific tools that coaches can use to be a trauma-informed coach? Yeah. Um, can we point them? Uh, Where can we, yeah. Yeah, I think there are a lot of resources and thank you again for providing this platform that we can provide afterwards to learn more about the brain. And, and I know I'm not a science person. I actually like don't like science, never did as a kid. But now as a coach and something to apply it to, just like anyone, um, you'll understand it better, right? Because it's like, oh, and then you go out into the field and you try it out. So really just like learning a little bit more about the brain. And Dr. Perry does a really good job of this. If you just want to like watch the, the links to just talk about the brain and what happens when it's under stress. Um, yeah. And when you become brain aware, you really do become more empathetic and you take a breath and you understand that what they're doing maybe is a, it's skill, not will. Maybe they actually just don't know how to listen right now. Right, just like we right. would assume that we know how every single kid knows how to throw. Yeah. Maybe some kids don't know how to listen. Um, so we need to take like a breath potentially and respond versus react and um, know that there are contexts to all of our kids. They're tiny humans, just like us. Um, Connection, uh, again, that caring adult relationship, finding ways to connect, particularly now to bridge the gap until we get back to programs, 
um, using technology, checking in, uh, having like a buddy system. If you're sending out weekly workouts, then have them kind of like be accountability buddies to each other. Um, right. Right. Building those connections, not only just between you and the kids, but between themselves, because that's what we really want, right? Is like lifelong mm -hmm. friends. Um, so building those connections now, um, and again, being there for them. I think moving, connecting and moving together with the kids when they're back, we're providing examples now. Um, so jump roping, uh, kicking against the wall, having catch, anything that is repetitive and patterned, um, particularly with another person, that's those two things are exactly what is trauma-informed coaching, is physical activity with a caring adult. Um, so coming up with ways to kind of um, increase physical activity throughout the day, whether it's in the house, we came up with like a math obstacle where he had to solve three equations and then in, in between, he had to do like certain push-ups, and then we timed it. And then the next hour, he was like, all right, can we get it better? Like a little bit faster. And we know that physical activity yeah. is amazing. It lights up the part of the brain that we want, but it also improves learning, right? Like right. we don't like sitting. That's why we're mm -hmm. coaching. That's why we played so much. So as much as possible, using, uh, like if you have to get schoolwork, do brain breaks every 30 to 60 minutes, whether that's right. burpees right. or I'm a star. Um, but like, it's important and it actually will help kids improve behavior and educational outcomes. Um, and so that um, consistency factor, again, the wrenching away of control when you need it the most, um, what, what's the schedule today? Don't, you don't have to follow it like perfectly, but for when we're here in our homes and as a parent, we still have work to do and they have work to do. Um, so it would help everybody. But even when we come back to our programs, like start in a circle. Right? right, start and end in a circle. Have a cool down, have a warm up. Just as we would physically, we need that mentally as well. We need to kind of like warm up our brains to be prepared for what's about to happen. Um, so that consistency is super important. And that's where you check in and you ask how everyone's doing and you could do like a one to five, one, I'm not awesome, five, I'm awesome, I'm great. Um, and that can kind of like help you figure out what you're about to do for practice. Um, but that consistency is also super important. This has been so amazing. We're going to wrap up pretty soon because I know we don't have that much time. But honestly, I really appreciate you coming on here and sharing these oh. tangible resources and tools that coaches and parents can implement right away. I think when when um, a lot of people hear trauma-informed coaching, there might mm -hmm. be a misconception um, yeah. or an intimidation where they think that they need to dive into the trauma that kids are going through, right? Not at all. Yeah. You, shown that they don't actually have to do that. It's not about diving into the exact trauma that kids are going through because coaches yeah. aren't really equipped or, ed or um, oh. yeah. qualified, you know, professionals yeah. to dive into the trauma, right? Yeah. So right. actually sharing these resources and tools mm -hmm. and um, specific, you know, tangible things that they can actually do to help, I think is so important and actually relieves my stress when I'm thinking about helping yeah. someone who's going through stress. I hope yes. it was. Um, I hope it was helpful. We, you're totally right, Marty. It's, it's behavior tells a story. And that only, if, if you only go from there, right, that you don't need to know more. You just need to know yeah. that something's up. And that stems from having a connection and a relationship and knowing their baseline and be like, oh, usually this person's at a four and today they're coming in at a one, right? And that's yeah. where that caring adult relationship comes in and connection comes in. Um, but you don't need to know exactly what's happening. You just need to know that something's up. Right. You know, it's different and changed. Yeah, for sure. Okay. Well, we could provide more tools and we could yes. talk for days. And I know. We can keep this going. It's so good. Such good information. Oh. I'm going to link, we're going to link um, specific resources that you talked about throughout this interview in the comment right. section for people to tap into. And even if they want to leave some questions in the comments, um, I know we're posting this um, as a recording, so we're actually able to engage live with the audience. But if they do have questions, you guys feel free to leave some questions in there, comments. Um, I mean, I hope everyone is getting some awesome information out of this, as I have. So I really appreciate you, Claire, for joining us today. And, you know, sharing your wisdom and expertise, this has been amazing. Hey, everyone's doing their best. I, I'm also wanting to learn and continue these conversations and just be vulnerable at this point. I don't, no one knows every single answer. So I'd love to learn more from everybody and how we're all going to get through this together. So thank you for having us. And um, I can't wait for more conversations to happen. 
Absolutely. Thank you so much. Um, again, this has been Marty Reed with Positive Coaching Alliance, joined by Claire Perry with We Coach, And um, we really appreciate the time that everyone's taken to watch this and really learn. Um, and we'll be back with more resources throughout this time. So thank you, everyone, and have a great day. See ya. See ya.